there, Jason. It's an interesting angle. Sorry, I didn't know you were, you were behind me. No, 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 I was, I was telling you. Uh, okay, sorry, my radio is not working. No problem. Morning, folks. How are you doing? Um, I'm wondering what the best thing to do is here. I'm just going to reverse it with folks. Okay. Okay, he's making another route to our here. And there appear to be four lion lying in that pile that you're looking at now. As well as another five, it looks like. Dotted about in other places. And they're called the Breakaway Pride. I don't know too much about them. I've never seen them. It's apparently four adult lioness. There's actually 13 apparently lying here. I think they said. So four adult lioness and nine sub-adults. So hard to believe that in amongst all of this thick vegetation there are 13 lion. Can I move it to a different angle for you, Jason, or are you? I don't think we can get much better than that gap where we've got it, got it there. It does look like there's one coming in to, to join them and greet them, which would be great. There's already so many lions on top of one another. It would be great to get another one amongst them. It appears to be giving its claws a little sharp in there. And that's how they maintain their claws, by scratching them on. The bark of trees like that. Well, I'm glad we did come here to have a look and just to see this many lines all piled up together is unique. Oh, one sneezed and they all got a fright. Copy that, Alex, thank you. <coughs> so a few of our viewers that follow the prides of lion closely through the Sabi Sands believe that it is the breakaway pride and that in conjunction with the information handed to me from the guides of this area, it is apparently the breakaway pride. So 
like I said, I don't know too much about them. It's the first time I've seen them, and obviously they are called the Breakaway Pride because they potentially did split up from another pride at some point. And now they're a formidable pride. I mean, four lionesses and nine sub-adults, a pride of 13 lions. There's a very considerable pride size, especially for the Sabi Sands. They don't often get very big here, so it'll be interesting to see how much bigger it does get. Beautiful, so difficult to tell, but she looks like a considerably sized lioness, but she doesn't look very old. Again, hard to tell when they're all bundled up in the foliage like that, especially when you haven't seen them before. Got a young male here doing some beard grooming. I'm wondering if he's going to continue. No, he's just stopped, but he may show some signs of further action. Oh, and he did. Here we go. We're very lucky. Oh, so he's got a bit of a limp. Could be from several different things. But it could even just be a little fawn in his foot. So hard to tell, but I'm glad we got to see him up on the move. Well, this morning certainly has been a morning that has been filled with lion. Two big males and a buffalo kill. Again, big thank you to Jason for finding them for us. And then now, I mean, we can't see 13, but there are 13 of them here. But just what you can see in your picture now is literally a screen full of lions piled up on top of one another. So good morning for lion, no sign of leopard, not even one single track that I saw. But that could change this afternoon. And the important thing to know for this afternoon is the great prospects that lie ahead. Hopefully those male lions will be a bit more active, potentially feeding on that carcass, maybe even if we're very lucky vocalizing. And there is also the chance that this pride of 13 lions gets on the move. And that will be something we certainly want to try and get ourselves involved in. We may have problems here though, because there are potentially a few vehicles traversing this property that are all going to have the same intentions, so it's going to be difficult to get to these lioness when they are getting active. As like I said, there's going to be a lot of vehicles that want to be in that exact same position for obvious reasons. So. Either way, though, at least they're around, and there is a chance that we may be the lucky ones in the right position as they begin to wake this evening. probably getting to that stage of the day where they'll 
be wanting to move into the shade or start thinking about it. So this big lioness here, that is still happy with the cloud cover. Something else to bear in mind for this afternoon is it will be not just myself out, but both Mark and myself, so two different vehicles. And Sorry of waking up that few man. I did not mean to do so. No problem. That's okay. okay. No problem. I came into the no view. problem. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. How many are in there? Sorry? How many are in there? One, two, three, in four, here? five, six, seven, eight. Should we, we can move out the way, we can move out the way and you can... No, 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 I'm moving, pulling out. Okay, you sure? Okay. It's a group of 13. Wow. I'm measuring four females and nine juveniles. Okay. Good, well, I'm glad we got to see this. Yeah, we um, can't see them all because they're all packed together there. Yeah, exactly. But we know them very well. Good. They are residents at London Lodge. Okay. Very residents. So, very, very occasionally to come this far okay. north. Well, that's lucky then. Yeah, so they broke into two different groups. Now we call this breakaway. Yeah. And the original group that is still in there is called uh, Chalala. Chalala is the original name for them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Copy, thank you very much. So we've just got some confirmation, one from Diane, who knows that the four lionesses were born in around 2009. So they're around six years old now. Putting them kind of in the prime of their life, I guess. And the sub-adults, I'm not too sure how that That works exactly how the the build up of the the nine sub adults works, the breakup of of that. But what is wonderful is that we are getting to see a new pride of lion that we have yet to see. And as I was saying just a few moments ago, both myself and Mark will be out this afternoon. So that way we can divide and conquer, and hopefully, well, either one of us will be on the males and one of us on this pride of lioness. Unless something changes, but at least we've got great prospects to switch between the two different sets of lions and, and what they're getting up to this evening. And it really is wonderful working in conjunction with somebody like Mark, so... And all the other guides out here, for that fact. But really important, the teamwork and what is unique for us is that, unlike a regular game viewer with guests on board, we can sw switch between the two vehicles, thus giving you two different angles, two different guides, and also giving you the best content at any given period. So your chances are twice as good seeing something here on Safari Live than it is actually when you're out here in real life. And just 10 more minutes to go. So we will spend the next 10 minutes here. I don't expect anything to change, but it will be nice just to stay here as long as we can, because we may not come back this afternoon, depending.
question just come through from Doug. Morning, Doug, and welcome on board. Doug's asking what the lion population is like in South Africa at the moment. Is it stable, increasing, decreasing? It's a very good question, Doug. Um, I don't know the nitty gritty, and I also don't know who to believe because you'll get v varying figures from different sources on such matters. What's important to understand with regards to your question is that wild lion and lion are two different things. So the population of lion, captive lion, is probably increasing in Africa and the world over because there are so many captive breeding programs. To me though, that doesn't count. They need to be wild animals to count. Yes, having zoos that keep genetic, uh, what's the word? That, that keep the genetics of a species going and alive is great and it's better than animals becoming extinct and it is great for research and for people to see animals that would no ways be able to come on safari and then see those animals. So there's a need for captive animals but they don't count. So I'm gonna eradicate them from your question and I'm just gonna assume that you're talking about wild lion populations because they're two very different things. And I think over the last 20 years, it's fair to say that the wild lion populations of South Africa have remained fairly stable, I think. Um, they would have obviously decreased to a point but since all of the national parks and reserves have been in place, they have been able to stabilize and maintain healthy populations as far as I'm aware. And also, conservation has increased greatly in South Africa in areas that were previously farmed agriculturally or f for domestic animals are now being reverted back to wild animal farms and therefore increasing territories for lions to exist. So you do get a lot of reintroduction of lions into areas where they used to exist, but then were eradicated for farming purposes. So I'm sure in certain areas of South Africa, it's increasing. Um, now that is speaking about South Africa, which is a different uh, example to that of possibly less developed countries um, where Lion populations may still be under more of a threat and less management and care is taken of them. So it does vary where you go in Africa, certainly, but in South Africa, I think it's fair to say that it's stable. Having said that, though, I know there will be people saying that lions are endangered and threatened and it's a result of hunting. Um, there will be that <coughs> angle. I'm not entirely sure how true that is. Again, I'm just speaking from my own speculation and I don't actually have any hard facts on this matter, Doug. But good question and I'm sure there will be some feedback or stats coming through from people who are more au fait with this than me. But then again, at the end of the day, who comes up with these facts and figures and how credible are they? That's what I always ask myself. So, it's something to bear in mind when reading stats and figures about conservation related issues. Depending on the people that are broadcasting a message, they may make things suit their need and therefore not make actual sense at the end of the day and I'm not doing this I'm not saying this in a cynical fashion I'm just saying that it could well be swift points of views depending on people's opinions well I'm glad this one lioness is busy doing her nails because if she wasn't we'd be looking at 13 sleeping lion, it's rather 12 sleeping lions scattered amongst us with one 
doing a manicure. I'm not sure if I would like her to do my nails. Not that me and Romeo get our nails done anywhere. <laughs> but if we were to get them done somewhere one day, I wouldn't like it to be by her. Although it does, her nose does look quite cute when it scrunches up when she's going for the precision little nibbles at the end. She could potentially be trying to get a thorn out of her foot. A lot of the thorn seeds, which are used, or which are dropped by plants at this time of the year, are beginning to ripen. So the thorns are increasing. They were soft just a few weeks ago, some of the hardcore thorns here. But in the last few weeks, they've grown and hardened. And there are a lot more thorns around. From the, from the kinds of thorns that are dropped off from small bushes and trees and then their mode of transport isn't water or wind as these pods here may be that Jason can potentially show you the pods of this bush willow seed will rely on wind to transport them from A to B and that's why they've got that four winged pod that would be able to blow very efficiently you get some of those similar ones that only have two wings that would then float well so that would be good for water dispersion but then you also get thorns that stick into hooves or pads of feet and then that way get dispersed and transported through an ecosystem so those are all ripening now as are these four winged pods of the Combretum but just a few minutes left folks and a very big thank you for following from myself and Jason and Alex in the final control and another again another big thank you to Blue Jay for finding that African rock python that sadly sounds like it has lost the battle to the weavers but what an incredible sighting and an interesting twist of events in that the hunter became the hunted and just a minute to go now And like I say, this afternoon, both myself and Mark will be out. I'm really looking forward to it. Weather-wise, we could expect anything. I'm not going to try and make any predictions, but there are some rain clouds around, so we could have some stormy weather. Anyway, a big thank you from me. And until this afternoon, we'll leave you on the last few little images of these lions. And we look forward to catching up a little bit later.